Welcome to our lecture online. Most of us realize that water is a very necessary substance for life and when we go look for life in the universe, we typically want to find water to almost guarantee there's a possibility for life. Without water, there's almost a guarantee there wouldn't be any life. But it even goes beyond that because water has some very unique properties, some incredibly unique properties that are key to survival of us Matter of fact, we may not even be here if it wasn't for those two properties. What are those two properties? Well, let's take a look. First of all, water expands when it freezes. That's extremely unique. Virtually everything else, there might be one exception somewhere, but just about everything else, when it freezes, it becomes more dense. It shrinks in size, becomes more dense. Secondly, water is most dense at 4 degrees centigrade, not at 0 degrees centigrade. It's less dense at 0 degrees centigrade, and it's most dense at 4 degrees centigrade before it becomes less dense again as it gets warmer. Those two properties combined make a huge difference for life on Earth. So let me explain. So we know that these are the two properties water has. So for example, in the summer when we have a big lake, the water at the top will be warm and of course it will be less dense because water begins to expand after it becomes warmer than 4 degrees centigrade but as you go deeper in the lake it gets colder and towards the bottom it may be 4 degrees centigrade so let's assume that's how that lake is in the summertime then it gets colder in the fall and in the fall the temperature the air temperature cools down so the water at the top begins to cool down and when water is at 4 degrees centigrade it will sink to the bottom and colder water because it will continue heat will continue to escape water will continue to cool down but the colder water will stay at the top once it goes below four degrees centigrade because it's less dense than water at four degrees centigrade and two degrees centigrade water is less dense than three centigrade degree water so there's this differentiation of temperature and the four degree water will remain at the bottom of the lake then winter appears, it gets very cold, and the water at the top begins to freeze, it becomes ice, and because the property of water that it expands when, when water freezes into ice, ice will float on top of the water and not sink. Below that will be the least dense water at 0 degrees centigrade, then at 2 degrees centigrade, and at the very bottom of the lake, it'll be 4 degrees centigrade water, and that water will remain pretty well at 4 degrees centigrade because ice is a really good barrier to the transmittance of heat. Heat will not be transmitted readily. Water is also a very good insulator, so when you have this differentiation, it's very difficult for the heat to get down to the bottom, or vice versa, for the heat to go from the bottom and escape through the top, through the water above it, and through the ice. So you see that the lake will remain unfrozen below here and will only freeze on a very thin layer of ice. In some cases, it could be several feet thick because in some places it gets really cold, like in Canada and Siberia and, and, and in some of the northern states of the United States. But other than that, you would expect only a thin layer of ice through the winter and then when the summer comes the ice will melt, the water will begin to warm up again and eventually you'll end up in a situation where the warm water will collect at the top and at the bottom it will remain at about 4 degrees centigrade. But what if those two properties did not exist? What if ice was more dense on water so when water turns into ice it would sink? And secondly, what if water was most dense at 0 degrees centigrade not at 4 degrees centigrade? Same scenario, same lake in the summertime, the warmer water would be at the top, the colder water would be at the bottom, as we would expect. But then as fall arises, notice that the water would continue to get cooler and cooler, especially when the air temperature becomes cold. And eventually when the temperature above the lake becomes less than zero degrees centigrade, the water at the top would cool down, colder water would sink to the bottom, warmer water would be pushed to the top because it's less dense, and eventually you would get zero degree water at the very bottom and four degree water at the top. Of course, it could be different numbers, but that's the trend that you would see in the fall. Then when winter approaches and becomes very cold, at the very top the water would begin to freeze, but as soon as it freezes, it would begin to sink to the bottom in the, in the form of ice. And ice would accumulate at the bottom and slowly the whole bottom of the lake would just keep filling with ice and ice, and depending upon how cold it was and how long the winter lasted, more and more ice would accumulate, and above that the water would be at zero degrees centigrade, 
Potentially, the entire lake could become one big block of ice. And now what happens in the spring? Well, in the spring, water would begin to melt, but at the bottom here, the ice would remain ice, potentially through the entire summer, because again, the top layer of the water would become warm, but underneath, the water would be colder and colder, cold water sinks to the bottom, and heat would have a very difficult time to penetrate that layer of water to get to the ice to melt it, and therefore you would not expect the ice to melt, and then of course the next winter, it would get cold again, whoop, I'm over here, it would get cold again, the whole, uh, the whole lake would be full of ice, and only in the summertime would you have a thin layer of water. That would happen to the oceans as well, especially the Arctic Oceans and near the Antarctic. Vast quantities of oceans would become big blocks of ice, and the whole world would potentially become a big ball of ice. If it wasn't for those two properties, hmm. So, we probably have our existence to thank to the fact that water has those two very special properties. And remember, water is the only substance that acts in that particular way, and it's absolutely essential for our existence and survival on the world. Quite interesting. You didn't explain why. <laughs> I did not explain why, that is correct. Well, it turns out that when water freezes, the way the crystal structure acts, it sets itself up in a way that it takes more room. So each atom, or I should say each molecule of water in the frozen state becomes a crystal, and because the shape of the crystals, it pushes itself away from each other so that each crystal requires more room in the frozen state than it does in the liquid state when the water molecules can roll over each other. And so when they kind of push each other away, the ice expands and becomes less dense. That's not what I meant. <laughs> what did you mean? There would be no marine life. Okay, so the question is why wouldn't we exist? Well, first of all, yes, water, so life, life started in the oceans. If the oceans were all big blocks of ice and the lakes were all big blocks of ice, it would not be a good place for, water to, for life to start. So since water in the oceans were such a key component of the existence of life on the earth, if there were just big blocks of ice, there wouldn't be any life and we probably wouldn't be here to talk about it. 